Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, what I want to be looking at is the reaction between magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid. And that's going to make soluble magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. All right? Now, the heat of this reaction, so delta H of the reaction, since it's constant pressure, we're going to equate that to the heat of the reaction, uh, is going to be equal in magnitude. So Q of my reaction is equal in magnitude, but opposite sign, Q of the solution, not just of water, but it includes the HCl solution and the magnesium that ultimately becomes part of that solution. So I'm going to do an MCAT. So I have minus, if I have 100 milliliters, and I assume it's the density is the same as water, my mass is 100 grams. And because the magnesium dissolves or reacts in the reaction, I need to include its mass as well. It gives me my heat capacity. And I need my temperature final and my temperature initial. That's of the bulk solution, which is my surroundings. So that's 44.8 minus 22.2. And if I do that math, Q of my reaction is minus 9503 joules. Now, that's the energy that is involved when I reacted 0.5 grams. So that's that many joules for every 0 0.500 grams. The question asks me, what is it per mole of magnesium? So I have to eliminate grams, and I need to get moles in my denominator. Mass to moles use molar mass. HCl, this is in excess. We're not going to deal with the HCl at all. It's all about the magnesium. So 24.31 grams for every one mole and I get minus 4.62041. That answer is off a little bit. Um, and so if that, that's in joules per mole so if I wanted kilojoules, it would be 462 kilojoules for every one mole of magnesium. Since there's one mole of magnesium, that is my delta H naught per mole of reaction as written. That means for every one mole of magnesium, for every two moles of HCl, one mole of magnesium chloride, one mole of hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's how you do mole of reaction. It's per the moles of the balanced reaction as written. Now I want to do um, another type, and this is finding the heat capacity of a metal. It's very simple, th similar though. Q of one process equaling same magnitude but opposite sign. So Q of the metal, so we take, we, we've got a, a beaker and we've got some water in the beaker and we're going to drop, in this case it's kind of a massive piece of metal, I'm not sure how re realistic that number is, but we're going to drop the metal in it. And the metal is hot, so heat's going to transfer from the metal to the water. And we're going to assume that all of it went to the water and not to the container or outside. So we're assuming that doesn't happen. So minus Q of my water. So my water uh, mass, I have to get from my experimental data. I've got to subtract the cup. So I've got to deal with those two numbers. 180.89 grams minus the cup. Heat capacity of water is 4.184. We saw that in the previous question. Now let's look at my water. My final temperature of my water is 52. My initial temperature of my water is 17. Whoops, I, I, I messed that up. Sorry about that. My initial of my water is 27. 
minus 17. Sorry about that. And if we solve that, I get minus 7472 joules. Okay, so now I need to find my heat capacity of my metal. So we know Q of the metal. So I'm going to take that minus 7472 joules. I need my mass of metal. Well, this is cup and water and metal, and this is cup and water. So I'm going to take 780.89 minus 180.89. I'm not sure where I got this problem, but it sure seems that that's a pretty big piece of metal. But okay, then it's the heat specific heat capacity of the metal that we have there. And then now look here, we've got um, the final temperature is the same for both of them. So it's 27 minus my initial, that's 52. Now, if you solve that, you get a heat capacity equal to 0 0.498 joules per gram degrees Celsius. You've always got to watch those units, right? So if this is grams and this is joules per gram degrees Celsius and this is degrees Celsius, it cancels to give us the joules. So watch those units. All right now I want to do one more thing here really quickly I don't have a problem on this we'll work on that in class but it's not uncommon be careful because we have what's called the molar heat capacity and so I'm just suspecting AP is going to throw that at us coming up and in that case you may see something like joules per mole degree, maybe you don't even see degree Celsius, maybe you see Kelvin. Well, if we want to find Q in joules, that means instead of multiplying by mass, we have to multiply by moles. Now, since it's a delta T, you can actually have degree Celsius or Kelvin because a change in temperature is the same for both of those. So keep your eye on that and really watch your units very, very carefully. If it's joules per gram, you can multiply by grams, but if it's joule per mole, you have to multiply by moles. Okay, I hope that helps until I see you. Good luck in chemistry.